Hello everyone, it's Tanya here and for today's video, I'm going to show you guys how you can go from this to this to this to this. <laughs> So as you can tell by the title of this video, and I'm pretty sure by that small intro, today I'm gonna be showing you guys an in-depth view of how I film and edit my YouTube videos. So I finally made the time today. I have a video that I filmed last night that I'm gonna show you guys how I actually have my setup. All products mentioned, I will have linked down below to help you guys out if you guys wanna get some of these. This is just me showing an insight of how I actually make my YouTube videos. My lighting, my camera, my tripods, my microphones, all the wires I have, how I actually set up my audio, and then we're we're gonna move to my computer and show you guys my editing software, my editing style, all that good stuff, and how we literally go from the raw footage you saw at the beginning to the final cut. Before we get into all that, make sure you guys go check out my social medias. All those will be linked in the description, as well as my second channel if you wanna see a little more type vlog style videos. And also, the merch link is down below if you guys wanna go get some merch. Make sure you tag me. Today's social notification shout out goes to Bailey Brooks. Thank you for turning on my notifications. As you can tell, you guys caught me on my day off where I'm not really filming. I have like minimal makeup on concealer, bronzer, mascara, and brows. I have my blue light glasses on. Again, everything will be linked down below. Right now we're talking about how we do the main setup. Let's get into it. So as you guys see in the clips that I'm putting in this video, you guys can see that I have three lights. Two on the side here that help with side shadows and my main focal front light, which is the ring light. So I kind of just want to show you guys the process of how important lighting is. I will show you how much natural light comes in through the windows, okay? Let me turn these off, okay? You shall see. This is how bright my basement is with the lights on and the windows. This is how bright it is. It is dark down here. So a lot of people won't need this many lights because you can fully use natural lighting and your videos can look great. Me personally, I don't have access to a lot of natural lighting. So for example, here is the footage with just poor natural light as well as lighting coming from the sides, not much really. And here are the umbrella lights. Again, everything's linked down below, but look, this is one. This is two. See how it's still kind of dark? So many shadows. You see the shadow in the background? How big it is? How you can fully see a second arm? That's because there's no light coming from the front. It's just coming from the side because you have one light on the left and one light on the right. So now I'm gonna show you with the ring light on. So here's it with the ring light on and see how the shadows on my face are less harsh because now we have light coming in almost every direction. I believe that lighting is the most important thing for YouTube videos because you could not have the best quality camera ever. But if you have pretty good lighting, you can make it work. I just don't have good natural lighting in my house, unfortunately. We don't have a lot of big windows, especially in the basement. They're like this big so I gotta make use of some artificial light yeah so this is with all three of my lights and this would be with just the ring light see that harsh shadow is back it's just not well lit these lights coming from the side these umbrella lights made the biggest difference for my channel personally <laughs> Now the camera I used to film my YouTube videos is the Canon EOS 80D. Now the first camera I ever got was when I was young, right? So it was a really small Sony camera. But the first camera I ever got specifically for YouTube, because I used to film on my phone when I was in high school. The first one I ever got for YouTube was this very small $300 Canon camera. But the thing that really bugged me about it was there was no viewfinder. And I would film like hundreds of videos that were all blurry and it was just very frustrating. So I spent years dealing with that issue to save up for the Canon EOS 80D which is the camera that I'm currently using right now and I'm absolutely in love with it. I have had this camera now I think for two years. I've had no problems with it. Now again, none of this is like sponsored. This isn't necessarily a starter camera. I do thoroughly believe that if any of you at home are wanting to start a YouTube channel, you don't need to go buy a thousand dollar camera or a two thousand dollar camera. You can get one that's a starter one, just try and have the best lighting as possible and you can make it work. And then in the future if you want to invest in a more expensive camera with color correcting and view finders and stuff go right ahead but the camera I'm using right now to film vlog style on is the g7x and I will have both these cameras linked down below if you just want to look at them see how they look like you can get both on Amazon so I've showed you guys my lights I've showed you my camera now the tripod I use the big one I got it at Walmart I'll see if I can find it on Amazon but I got it for like 20 bucks at Walmart or I'm pretty sure Best Buy has other tripods you can get tripods really aren't that expensive because all you need it for is just the camera like you don't need to get the additional stuff for tripods. It's just a waste of money. I used to use a small little microphone that I got from Amazon that I attached to my plant and I know you guys know that one but the one I use now as much as I loved the plant and how iconic it was my sound quality with this Yeti microphone has been insane. It was tough because I switched microphones in the middle of this global pandemic. 
right? And when I went to Best Buy to try and get them, they were all sold out. So I'm really happy that I found it on Amazon, but I got the black blue Yeti microphone. Basically for the Yeti mic, this is the back of it, right? When you're on YouTube, you want to do as little gain as possible. This is how it sounds like with no gain. And this is how it sounds like with a lot of gain, even though I'm talking at the same volume. Though so I like to reduce it to like all the way down and I find that it's a lot better. <laughs> now you want to go for the upside down heart because the Yeti microphone does doesn't have audio input from the top like you would assume. It actually comes from all four sides. So when you put it on the upside down heart, it is the best for actually talking. You set it up straight like this. When you set it on that upside down heart setting, it'll only capture audio from the front. It won't catch it from the sides or the back. And that's the best setting to have as a YouTuber, right? Because you don't want your microphone catching audio of your foot tapping underneath the table. For example, I'll show you. I'll talk at the same volume from the front and from the back. Hello. Hello. So it's not as strong at the back because I did put it on the point where it only captures audio at the front because I don't want it to capture weird noises. The important thing to know about the Yeti microphone is that it needs a power source, not one from an outlet, but from a computer because apparently the computer has a special thing to actually process the sound. Whereas if you just plugged it into an outlet, it wouldn't be the same. So this is USB powered and you're not going to be able to hear me in one second. I'm going to unplug it right now. You couldn't hear me, could you? No. <laughs> I got the new MacBook Air a couple months ago and it doesn't have a USB in it. So I had to get from Apple an adapter that had a memory card slot and a USB slot. So you just plug in the USB to your computer because I feel like most people have computers with USB slots. And then you know the microphone is on, not when it's blinking, but when the red dot is there. And you'll see that there's a little adjuster. I like to put mine slightly less than halfway. Like this is loud. This is three quarter of the way. This is halfway and this nothing. So I like to put it just before half. I find that with the distance I am from the mic, it captures it the best. So as you can also tell that I have my laptop because I need my laptop to film now because I need a power source for my mic. I have a laptop stand that I got on Amazon. I'm obsessed with it. I had a problem where I would always slouch like this when I use my laptop. <laughs> So now it's also nice to have it propped up when I'm filming. You guys can probably tell in some of my videos, I like I'm using my laptop. I'm like, oh, uh, I need to Google this really quickly. I need to find the notification shout out. Really handy to have it here because I need it anyway. So that's how I kind of have my setup. And you can also see that I have a mirror here just to kind of check myself. I forgot to show you guys, but one thing I do want to show you is how to actually set up the camera. So as you can see here, the battery is dying, but on Amazon, I bought two batteries. So now I have three that I kind of recycle with. So now I don't have an issue with my camera dying all the time. So basically, there's an on and off switch over here that I just always have it on on really and then I only ever just stop recording like that because it's just a hassle to remember to turn that on or off. There's a setting here, let it focus, for photos or videos. I have it on videos, I never change this. I try to never move where my tripod is and I try to never mess with the setting but I literally just press start stop and I have facial focus on here so I never have to worry about it being out of focus. And then this I always just keep indefinitely turned and then I keep this behind here, this wire for the microphone that plugs into the actual camera and unfortunately an auxiliary cord like this does not actually come with the microphone. I had to get it on Amazon by itself. So there's two lines there. You want to make sure it has at least two when you buy one on Amazon and it's double ended. I think it's called like the mail cord or something. And so you just plug that into the side there. Like that. And that's pretty much it. You know, memory card goes in here like that. The battery is underneath like this. You just pop it out like so. And then I just, I'm just going to keep that in. And yeah, that's pretty much the whole camera thing. <laughs> I do have a white backdrop here. I got this pole to hang it up from, I think, Home Depot, so I can't really share you where I got that from. My dad had to cut it with a metal saw cutter, so, like, that I can't really help you out with because it was a real hassle and it was mostly my dad figuring it out for me. But I bought a white backdrop on Amazon. I've only rolled it down once in, like, eight months. <laughs> and it's a whole roll, so I feel like I'm gonna have this for years. But I plan on getting, like, a pink one, I think, in the future. This is a plant that was, like, my mom's when her and my dad first got the house, like, 20 years ago. This is just an old plant. I don't know how much it was. I don't know where they got it from, but they didn't want it anymore. And I'm like, I'll, and I was like, I'll take it. I'll take it. And the white table that I'm using currently also, I got from Ikea. I got this for like 20 bucks at Ikea. I only got it because it was 20 bucks. And you really don't even need a table if you don't have a microphone. I have a microphone, so I need a table. But when I didn't have a microphone, I didn't even use a table to film. So to each their own. I think that's it. I think now we're going to move on to actually editing and stuff. And we're going to...
we won't need this microphone anymore. We'll just go straight to the vlog camera and we'll get to some of the more technical stuff. Let's do it, do it. <laughs> Why, hello everyone. It's Tanya here. Um, I'm using my G7X, my vlog camera, because I'm not trying to like mess up my setup. I apologize that the audio isn't the best. But we are now shifted a couple meters to the right, <laughs> my filming area, and this is where I edit my video. Now I do have my laptop, and I prefer not to edit on a laptop because I don't like the small motion that you have to do like this because I felt like I was getting early set on carpal tunnel after years of editing on a laptop, and I find that the motion of a computer with a mouse and keyboard is so much better. To show you guys how I import my footage, how I edit, because the video I'm gonna show you guys today is a video that I actually need to get up today. So I'll show you how I start editing it, I'll show you all that good stuff. Yeah, <laughs> let's get into it. So the computer I have here is a iMac and I recently, I've been saving up for this for years because it is something that I've really wanted and it has changed my YouTube game so much. Like the hard drive on this is so amazing. My videos before, videos that were 15 minutes on my old laptop, it would take 40 minutes to render a video. On this computer it takes like 10 minutes now. So it's insane. As you can see back here, that's where you put it in the iMac. But as you can see, as soon as I plug in my memory card here, we have the untitled, I don't have my memory card name. So this is where it goes. So the editing software I use to edit my videos is Final Cut Pro. Now I did start off with iMovie. iMovie was great. It did it for me literally for like three years I used iMovie because it came for free with any Apple computer. So first thing I do is I open the app, right? I open Final Cut Pro. I never actually edit on the full screen because it, it's just too big to look. So I usually make it like that, but we're just gonna move that over here. So I click new project, because right now my Final Cut Pro, I wiped it to like save storage. Project name, I just do it random. So for example, today I have a Princess Diana video coming out, so I'm gonna call it Diana. And here we have a blank. So on this part on Final Cut Pro is where I actually am gonna see myself. This is this part is where we're actually gonna make the edit. These are the saved filters and stuff that I have, which I'll show you, the saved color corrections. And so now I press Command I which if you are on a PC, it's control. So this is the video I filmed yesterday. <laughs> Don't mind my face. This is the one I'm gonna post today, which was the bit life video. This was an episode I filmed. This is the part, the footage I filmed today, which you can see. So for the purpose of this, I will show you guys these clips. So I'm just gonna import that. I just select the clip and I press return. If you wanna import all your clips, you can just kind of click and drag. I press the X over there and you have your clip here. This little circle in the bottom left corner, this is it showing the progress of it uploading. You can also see it on the top left over here. And you basically can't render your video until that's done loading. So now I click and drag this into the media area. We have all this stuff here of me like, first clip I'm showing you is my video without any microphone and no lighting. Hello everyone, it's Tommy here and today, hey guys, hello everyone, it's- So see how I like stutter a bit? Listen. Hello everyone, it's Tommy here and today, hey guys, Hello everyone, it's Tommy here. See, like I, I need to film stuff more than once because I know what I need to say, but my issue is my lips don't move as fast as my brain does. So I really struggle with saying things properly the first time, which is a big reason why I have so many edits in my videos because I stutter a lot. All this stuff was just kind of empty footage of me just setting up, getting ready to film. And so what I do is the shortcut, you could right click but what I like to do is I press Command B on a PC to be controlled. But I press Command B and that cuts the clip. Then I select the parts I don't want and I delete those. And now we're here with the first time of me speaking. So I'm having an issue because everything's kind of squished. So in Final Cut Pro, you can click this over here and press Zoom. So you can kind of, it's still the same clip, but it spreads it out as you can see. And then I press this button over here and now that's better. See the audio difference, how it's so much quieter and then you attach the microphone and it's insane. I can't even hear it. To this. See how there's a bunch of gaps? Gap that I'd edit out. The one over here I'd edit out. Oh, see, I'm very picky about having long pauses. I find it very awkward and boring, so I like to just cut those out. So I have a bunch of presets that I've saved. This was huge with Final Cut Pro. I'm not wearing the style of makeup that I prefer to wear on camera in this clip, which is what I have these presets for. This is my natural makeup, almost no makeup, just a little concealer and bronzer. So these presets are gonna look very different on this video clip specifically. See you before and now after. See how, ever, see how the greens are so much brighter. My hair looks blonder. Um, I like cool tones, I really do. And my lips look pinker. Do you see that? 
I'm doing a little pink lip liner in this video. I'm wearing pink eyeshadow, but for some reason in this, it looks pale and orange. And my eyes look so dull. So when I add this preset into it, everything changes. And all it is is simple color corrections. I've been using it for months now. But see how this looks on this with my full face of makeup. See how I'm wearing the exact same outfit? But see how it looks here versus here? That's the thing that the makeup does, is it changes it completely. That's what I mean by filming makeup versus natural makeup. Like my makeup right now on this camera here looks amazing. Like it looks beautiful in person, but on, on a HD camera with all my bright lights, it does not look that good. This makeup doesn't look that great in natural lighting, but on camera, it looks amazing. So that's just one thing that's very important for me is depending on which makeup I'm using. Usually when I'm filming vlogs, I'm not wearing that much makeup. When I'm filming my main videos, I'm usually wearing more. So I'm gonna delete this now. I just want to show you that real quick. But this makes a huge difference. I look so much more gray here and I prefer this. And this is kind of how it would look like in an actual video because the iMac, the screen is so big that like you can't really tell. To see how it looks a lot more HD from far away and you can really see this. To this the major difference and I personally that's my style see how I have all this footage right I am just going to add it add a filter on it basically that's pretty much all like this do. to this to this to this so that's that that's for this editing video this footage so now I'm gonna right click on the side here new project and this actually shouldn't be called Diana I messed up oh god I messed up this should be called editing <laughs> so new project and I'll do Diana bit life challenge Okay, and a bit like challenge. And now I'm gonna import my actual footage. And as you can see with the little circles, we start to import. So I highlight all the clips. I make sure I get the right ones, not this one, but these. And I click and drag. And as you can see, I have 44 minutes of footage, which my goal is to cut it down to at least 15 minutes. So I know that starts here. I'm going to command B, cut that, delete. First thing I'm gonna do now is go to my effects. I'm gonna scroll to my preset number 17 the one I like and I'm just gonna add it to all the clips and I do that because now it'll be that's my thumbnails <laughs> that's for my thumbnails but now all the clips will have that filter don't edit first and cut all the clips into 2,000 clips and then try to add the filters do the filters and color correcting first so the first thing I like to do is I so I go to my desktop I go to YouTube and I go to my intro so I have a main intro here which is the one I use Usually right away, then I'll take my subscribe outro, put that at the end so I don't forget, really. And here we have it so far. Why, hello everyone. See how there was too long of a pause? I'm gonna zoom in now. So it just makes the clips wider so I can see the gaps better. So I'm gonna go right there because I do not like awkward pauses. Why, hello everyone. It's Tanya here and welcome back. Why do I, why am I so dramatic with my hand movement? See how that's awkward? Like, I'm so awkward in real life and I do these weird things, but like, oh, something fell. Like, that looks so awkward in itself. Then I'm like, oh shoot, like, no, I need to edit it. I'm not gonna show you how I edit the whole video because that would make it an eight hour video. So I'm just gonna show how I edit my intro and I think that'll pretty much be it. Why, hello everyone, it's Tanya here and welcome back. Why do I... So I'm going to edit the small clip here, I'm going to go a little bit, and then now I'm going to go large. I'm back, why do I, why am I so dramatic with my- And see, that's the type of thing where I would do a Ken's burn. I use transform and crop. The so transform is the one, this little square here that you can do like the, actually crop it to make it bigger, undo, but this would be a Ken's burns thing where you crop and you press Ken's burns and then you do zoom ins start and end here so i'll end like that and then i'll cut to the next clip cut that why hello hello everybody um moving on <laughs> i feel like i want to add a sound effect so i'm going to go click this button here which is your sounds so you go to sound effects and i'm going to type in sus that's what i always do and this is one i like to use a lot that one <laughs> so i am going to do this here is the final thing i would do for the video which you'll see which you should have seen yesterday last version now why hello everyone it's Tanya here and welcome back why do i why am i so dramatic with my hand movements why hello everybody it's Tony here welcome back to my channel <laughs> um, moving on <laughs> and i never i'm embarrassed of my laugh so i never like to put a whole laugh because listen <laughs> <laughs> so I always like crop it out. Um, moving on. <laughs> so I like to crop it here. Why, why am I so dramatic with my hand movements? So why, hello everybody, it's Tony here. Welcome back to my channel. Okay. Okay. Um, moving on. <laughs> hello. 
low height. So that's basically just me editing the footage. Where it gets complicated is when I actually have to add on the double footage. Now, unfortunately, I can't screen record the, a screen recording app because the app is being used, so I can't show you it. But basically how the app works is I paid for premium, which is only a one-time purchase, and it makes me be able to record videos longer than 10 minutes and no ad HD quality, right? So it was worth it for me. It was an investment. I think it was five bucks, and I was like, dude, I bought a Starbucks coffee once. That's just one less Starbucks coffee. I click on the recording I just did, and what I do is I airdrop it to my Mac. As you can see, there you go. It's gonna show up in downloads, and then boom, click and drag, done. So the hardest part is matching it. So as you can see, automatically the recording is put right on the middle, which we don't want, we want it on the side. What I like to do is, you can see that this is audio here. There's no audio on this, but I always like to bring it all the way down just to make sure it doesn't capture something weird. But I do have a preset I've made to position the recording. I could move it around like this to where I wanted, but it's so hard every time to align it perfectly. Because up here you'll see position you want Y axis to be zero because you don't want it to be too much up because as you can see in the bottom then you can see the original one and you don't want it to be too low because then you can see the original at the top and I have it named as zero record I don't know why I named it like that so I'm gonna click and drag on the whole clip and it automatically moves there now every time I crop it or edit it'll always be there I just click and move it and I just make sure Y is at zero okay so let's be a female we're gonna go back to the there we go. So I just need to align it properly. Okay, so let's be a female. We're gonna go back to the UK. Okay, so let's be a female. We're gonna go back to the UK, our roots. I swear I do so many challenges in the UK or Belgium. So that's pretty much how I do the video on top of each other. And then I just keep the same thing. Little zoom ins, little Ken's burns. That's pretty much how I edit. Now I will show you a little bit more of the intro with sound effects. But guys, I think that's all pretty much I'm going to talk to you about today. I think I might make a separate video that goes in depth of how I actually make my thumbnails. So if you want to see that, let me know down below. But I will make sure to have every single product I mentioned to the best of my ability linked down below if you want to go look at them for yourself. But... This is how I edit and film my YouTube videos. It's a whole process. It's taken years for me to get to the point of where my setup is and my editing and stuff. Just take it with a grain of salt, try something new. Just try it if you want. Now's the time. A lot of people have more time now that a lot of people are home and just feel free to try. Even if you only ever ever film one YouTube video or only ever post once or you try editing and you're like, it's not for you, as long as you try. I don't know, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was like, different video for me. It was very in-depth and very detailed, so I hope this could help any of you at home that are wanting to start a YouTube channel, or if you already have one and you kind of just need some tips, or just to see. It's also good just to see how other people do stuff so you can learn something. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe down below. Check out my social media, my second channel, also the merch, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Mwah.